when the best of the sequels has nothing to do with the original source material, that says something. Okay, everybody, we're going back to 1982 today to check out a movie that was much maligned because it didn't have the double M in it himself. But if you take it for what it is and you understand what they were trying to do, you're going to love it. We're going back to 1982 to look at Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. But before we go any further, once and again, as always, you know the routine to the trailer. You don't really know much about Halloween. Halloween. The barriers will be down between the real and the unreal. And the dead might be looking in. The last great one took place 3,000 years ago when the hills ran red. Halloween, the children. You happen to know anything about this Cochran? All I can tell you, mister, is watch out. Season He's watching you, friend, I guarantee you that. Hey, Mr. Cochran, just what is the final process? Fellas, I was just kidding. Uh, witchcraft. To us, it was a way of controlling our environment. Hey! Where are they taking her? They're taking her to the factory. I want a mask. Can I have a mask? Uh, uh, just what I had in mind for you, little buddy. Why, Cochran? Do I need a reason? I've got nothing here to indicate there was ever a body at all. Operator, this is an emergency. I do love a good joke, and this is the best ever. A joke on the children. I'm glad you'll be able to watch it. You've got to believe me. They're going to kill us. All of us. Stop it! The world's going to change tonight, Doctor. Happy Halloween. Stop it! Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, the night no one comes home. Okay, this motion picture was directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. Now, Tommy Lee Wallace, his directing career, you know, is what it is. I mean, he did Fright Night 2. He did a bunch of TV work like uh, Max Headroom and The Twilight Zone. And uh, he did the It miniseries back in the day. And, of course, you know, like Baywatch and Flipper and uh, Final Justice and Witness to Execution, stuff like that. But the main thing is that Tommy Lee Wallace was part of the john carpenter family in the early, early on back in the early days I and mean, he was production designer on some of his earliest movies and he was part of that inner circle and that's kind of how he wound up with the job of directing this and by the way might i say he did a pretty damn good job at it okay playing dr dan chalice tom atkins now i'll get more into later on to what I think about Tom Atkins because I fucking love Tom Atkins. But anyway, he was in this and he was another one of the Carpenter crew. I mean, he was in stuff like The Fog, Escape from New York, Lethal Weapon, Night of the Creeps, uh, Maniac Cop, uh, My Bloody Valentine, you know, the 2009 one, uh, Striking Distance, and countless, 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 countless countless amounts of TV shows. So, Tom Atkins, I'm going to opine upon him later. Playing Eddie was Stacy Nelkin. Yep, been around, was in a few things. Maybe nothing major, but was in a few things. I mean, she was in stuff like Bullets Over Broadway and uh, uh, Up the Academy and uh, Yellow Beard and Serial and, and TV shows, you know, like Fish, everybody remembers that shit if you're my age, and Eight is Enough and The Waltons and Simon and Simon and Trapper John M.D. and uh, First and Ten and The A-Team and The Fall Guy, you know, the usual can of fodder that everybody showed up on back in the day. So, out, about, did her thing, was in a lot of shit, let's keep going. Okay, playing Cochran was Dan O'Hurley here. 
No, man, he was good in this. Anyway, we'll get to that shit later, too. Anyway, he was in other stuff. We're talking about he's in RoboCop and The Virgin Queen and The Last Starfighter and uh, The Night Fighters and City After Midnight and Waterloo and TV like Murder, She Wrote and Remington Steele and uh, Barnaby Jones and Bionic Woman and Hawaii Five O and iron sides so he had a long career a long 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 career was in a bunch of shit i'll get to how he did in this it just is what it is okay let's let's keep going okay everybody now i can go into all these other characters that are in the motion picture but a lot of these characters you know the actors portraying them maybe popped up in a little thing here and a little thing there but it's nothing that's going to jump out at you so what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to try to give you a couple of the actors that you are going to know well or you should know well because they were immersed and part of the Carpenter universe. First playing Linda Callis, wife of Dr. Callis, was Nancy Loomis, a.k.a. Nancy Callis. Anyway, she is so much a part of the John Carpenter lexicon that we all know and love. She was in Assault on Precinct 13 playing Lori. She was in Halloween playing Annie. She was in The Fog. She was in this. She was in so much of his early, early work in universe that it's almost impossible to separate her from it. You think Nancy Loomis, you think John Carpenter. She, she was married to Tommy Lee Wallace, who directed this, and was a production assistant, and he actually played Michael Myers in one of the scenes in the original Halloween. So it was part of that clique, part of that family, part of that universe. So it's cool to have her in this, even if it's only for a little bit, but she's in this, and that's all you need to know. And next, playing one of the assassins, as they're credited as, but you can call them, well, there's a bunch of things you can call them. Anyway, is Dick Warlock. Now you're like, Dick Warlock? Who the fuck is Dick Warlock? Dick Warlock actually had a really cool career. You see, he actually played Michael Myers in Halloween 2, which, as far as the sequels go, is semi-okay. But beyond that, he was Kurt Russell's stunt double in basically everything Kurt Russell did from 1975 to 1991. So, he was his stunt double in Escape from New York. He was his stunt double in Big Trouble in Little China. He was his stunt double in The Thing. They were both five foot nine, similar build, similar hair, and he just did all the work. There's so many times, if you go through, and it's out there where it will be like Dick Warlock saying, yep, that was me, that was me, that was me, that was me. It was really, really, really cool. So Dick Warlock had a bigger part of the Carpenter universe than you would think. And he was out there and about, what have you seen Kurt Russell at one point in that movie? Fucking that was Dick Warlock. Okay, everybody, I'm going to try to give you this story in 90 seconds or less, as I always do, so we can keep this moving, keep this flowing, and get to the summation, which is all really where we want to be anyway. So, here we go. Movie starts out, there's a man, he's running from these kind of suit-wearing assassins, if you want to call them that, and they're trying to kill him for whatever reason. But he goes to this gas station, where he blacks out, he's in shock, he's in terror, and he just needs help. Gas station attendant takes him to the hospital. Takes him to the hospital, gets there, Dr. Chalice, Dr. Dan, is taking care of him. Until one of those guys shows up and kills his ass, and then sets himself on fire, and all kinds of hell breaks loose. Next day, the daughter shows up. She's wondering, why, wow, geez, what the hell? Why did somebody kill my father? Dan is curious himself. Before you know it, him and the daughter go off on a little mission to find out exactly why, who, what's the story about wanting this old man murdered? Well, it turns out that it leads back to the Silver Shamrock Halloween Costume Factory. And when they're there, they find out that there's some ulterior motives going on by Cochran, the man who, rah, rah, runs and owns the Silver Samrock Halloween Costume Factory. The largest in the world, I might add. Before you know it, we find out there's a subplot and a little evil bit of witchcraft being thrown our way where he has a plot to play the ultimate prank, the ultimate gag, because that's what he's known for. He invented all the ultimate gags. You know, sticky toilet paper, shit like that. And his final gag, in the name of Halloween and the witchcraft that he practices, is to kill all the children. Ooh, that's not nice. Okay, everybody, let's get to brass taxes and knock off the bullshit. Why does this motion picture work? Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. 
it was the Halloween that didn't have Michael Myers in it. Boo hoo. Hey, I was there too. I was 12 years old in the theater going to see that, waiting for Mike to come out on the screen. And when he didn't show up, I'm like, what the fuck? And I walked out of there a little bit pissed. But as I watched the movie a year or so later, it was on HBO, it was on reruns and all the cable TV channels, I said, my God, this movie's a little gem. This movie as a standalone little feature is awesome. You see, Carpenter, he didn't ever want to do a Halloween sequel. It was the furthest thing from his mind. He didn't want any part of it. He got roped into doing the second one. Ugh. But when they gave him carte blanche on the third to do whatever he wanted, he said, I'm going to make an anthology series. Every year we're going to come out with a new Halloween movie. And every year it's going to be a different story. And this was the first. And this was the last. People didn't accept it. No Michael. No Halloween. It's just the way they rolled. Apparently they wanted to keep watching shit like Busta Rhymes karate kick him out a fucking window. I digress. Anyway, if you take this for what it is, it's a fun, thrilling, little, standalone Halloween movie. I mean, you got the cast. Tom Atkins, who to me, that's a leading man, leading man. You know what I mean? He's not a fucking pretty boy. He's the everyman. He's the everyman in the theater that's watching this thing. He's the hardworking, normal, run-of-the-mill guy who just gets cast into these situations, and he plays it perfect in every fucking movie he's ever been in. Tom Atkins is the shit. I wish his career was bigger. His career will always be linked to Carpenter, but it doesn't matter. He is awesome. Stacey Nelkin, okay, she can be a little bit wooden and robotic in this motion picture. Well, when you watch it, that, ah, never mind. She can be a little bit wooden and robotic in this motion picture. It doesn't matter. She filled the part. She played the role. She was cute as a button. And in the way, she's more famous for what never became of her career than what she did. See, she was supposed to be in the original Blade Runner, folks. Can you fucking believe that? She was in the running to play press. Daryl Hannah got it, but she was in the running. And then they hired her to play another replicant that died in the movie named Mary. But they had to cut that part out of the motion picture. Budget. Time. Is what it is. So, go watch Dangerous Days of Making a Blade Runner. You'll see Stacey Nelkin in it. She's in there a lot talking about Blade Runner. She wasn't even in the fucking movie. So, in a way, she's more famous for what she didn't do than the shit that she did. Dan O'Hurley, he is so delightful as the villain in this. He's dark, mysterious, but a showman, a con man, and a, like a child delightfully enjoying the evil that he is about to portray upon the world. He plays this so well, it's shocking. He played one of the great little movie bad guys of the 80s and probably all time. I'm serious. Watch his performance in this. He is awesome. He is spot on. His range of emotions and shit are all over the place. Nailed it. There's also a couple little gifts in the motion picture, by the way. Just pointing them out. You know when the curfew is announced over the loudspeaker? That's Jamie Lee Curtis doing it, folks. That's her. It's 6 o'clock. Curfew. Curfew. If you watch the one character when she zaps herself in the face with the laser, the music in the background is from The Fog. The scenes where Adrian Barbeau is driving her little VW thing up the mountainside. That's the music that they're playing. When Dr. Chalice is strapped to his chair, he's watching the movie Halloween. So there's a lot of little nods to what came before compared to where we are now. Another thing about this motion picture is Dean Cundy did all the cinematography for it. He was a DP on this motion picture, and you know he was a DP in a lot of Carpenter flicks. So when you watch this motion picture, even though Carpenter didn't direct it, there is a lot of Carpenter look to the lighting, and the vibe, in the mood, because Gene, Kendi, Gene Cundy, pardon me, lit it and did an excellent job and made you feel that you were watching a Carpenter flick. And there's also a lot of rumors floating around that when the movie was over, it was like, eh, and Carpenter actually went in and shot, shot a few pickup shots just to tidy this thing up a bit. If you take this movie at its core, if you take this movie for what it is and forget all the bullshit about Michael Myers and all that kind of crap, you will realize that this is just a fun little Halloween tale that is well written, well acted, well directed, well put together, well lit, well everything. And 
move and think of it as a picture of itself. Think of it as a season of witch. Forget even Halloween 3 even exists in the title. And I'm telling you, you will like this motion picture. Yeah, there's some cheesy parts into it. Who gives a shit? Yeah, there's some goofy acting in it. Yeah, a couple other people. Who gives a shit? It was the vibe and the tone that it set. A horror movie that was scary, but had characters that were a little bit goofy and over the top. Not your main characters, but some of the surrounding ones. It didn't matter. It's a solid, fun, well done movie that everybody should give a chance to and everybody should go out there and watch again and everybody should enjoy okay everybody once and again have a great one take care of each other look out for your fellow man look out for your friends your family and more than anything anything never take any shit from anybody catch you soon be good take care see you